we're going to look at um, multiple bulb circuits, right? So the first type is what's called a series circuit. And the two extremes we're going to look at, one's called series, one's called parallel. These are the basic multiple bulb circuits. And in a future class, we'll learn about, okay, what if we do both, or like in between mixtures of these. So a series circuit looks like this. You take your battery, you hook it up to a resistor, another resistor, third resistor, something like this. And the key with the series circuit is that these resistors are one right after each other. So you have one resistor and then that connection is connected to one end of one second resistor and then that opposite end is connected to one end. So they come right after each other. Think of the word series like a TV series. You would watch episodes one right after each other. Okay, So that's kind of what we mean by something that's in series. Um, so let me go ahead and put some numbers here. So let's say this is 120 volts. Let's say this is a 10 ohm resistor, 20 ohm resistor, 30 ohm resistor. Okay, 10, 20, 30. So in the circuit as is, this would be a challenging thing to try to figure out, to try to solve. And what I am going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to what I refer to as solving the circuit. And when I say to solve the circuit, what I want you to do is to calculate the voltages across the currents through and the powers of each resistor. So we're going to try to find the currents, the powers, the voltages of each resistor. Now we just did that when the warm up with that simple single resistor circuit, you found all those things. So you could do it with one, and now we're going to see how do we do it with multiples. Okay? Um, so here's what we do. We have a complicated circuit, right? We have three resistors. We're going to simplify this to the simplest possible circuit. What is the simplest possible circuit? How many resistors? One. one. So that's the initial goal is to get this complicated circuit into one resistor circuit. So when we do this, we call this finding the equivalent equivalent resistance. So this just means one resistor that represents all three resistors or however many you have. If you have 50, you do the same thing. You're going to change the 50 into 1. So our voltage stays the same. This is just like our battery or our outlet or whatever it is that we have it hooked up to. What we're going to do is find what's called REQ equivalent resistance, one resistor that represents all of them. So for a series circuit, this is really straightforward, and actually you could probably conceptualize what it would be. As we start adding resistors, what do you think is going to happen to the resistance? It's going to increase, right? So as you keep adding more and more resistors, it's going to just keep getting greater and greater and greater. And so in fact, to find the equivalent for a series circuit, you just add them up. So this would be the generic equation, R1 plus R2 plus R3, dot, dot, dot. If you have 50 of them, just add up all 50. So for this circuit, it's simply going to be, what, 10 plus 20 plus 30. So for this circuit, the equivalent resistance would be 60 ohms. That would be the 60 ohms represents the three resistors in series, that three resistor combo. So once we've done this, then we're just going to solve this circuit. So it might be hard to solve these, but it's easy to solve this. We just did it in the warm up, right? So again, we're going to find the voltages, the currents, and the powers. So, well, we know the voltage. What are we missing? The current and the power. So let's find the current. How do we find the current? I equals V over R. 
So 120 divided by 60 gives us 2. So again, what that means is that we have two amps going through our circuit here. And I would call this the I total. Like if I asked you what is the total current, or IT, or I total. And then we can also find the P total. Once we know I and V, how do we find P? Okay, just multiply them. So 2. 120 gives us 240 watts. So that would be our total power there, 240. So that's kind of your, your first step is to simplify. Your second step is to solve the simple one. Now we're going to go try to solve the series circuit and solve the, the rest of it. So the key thing is we learn stuff over here. Once you learn things, you can place what you learned over here. So what we learned is that there was two amps coming out of the battery here. So we're just going to place that on the circuit here and say there's two amps coming out of the battery over here also. Well one of the key concepts with the series circuit is what do you notice about how many loops do we have? How many circles? One. We just have one circle, right? Which means if we have two amps going through this, and we have two amps going through this, and we have two amps going through this. So remember, to solve this circuit, we are trying to find the currents, the powers, and the voltages. So what I do like to do is to make a little, a little table here to kind of um, help me organize my numbers. So I'm going to call this the VIP table. And I'm just going to label my resistors 10, 20, 30. Okay, 10, 20, 30. And as I solve things, I'm just going to fill in my table. And then I'll kind of know okay, what do I still need to figure out? What do I still need to find? So we just found three things. What did we just find? the three currents. Yeah, we found the current through each of these. And one of the key concepts with the series circuit is since there's only one loop, there's only one current and they are all the same. So all three resistors get the same current, two amps, two amps, two amps. All right, so what we are missing is the V and the P. However, if we can find the V, how are we gonna get the P? Okay, remember to find it, V, P is just equal to V times I, right? So we just need to find our voltages and then power is easy to figure out. Okay, so what we're going to do is just look at these one at a time. If you notice that there's two amps going through this resistor, this uh, is 10 ohms. If you know the current and the resistance, how do you find the voltage? Okay, we use Ohm's law. We'll use V equals I. V equals I times R. I should have written this bigger. V equals I times R. Got it? So we'll just do that. So that's 2 times 10. 2 times 10. 20. So that's going to be 20 volts across this here. So I'm just going to fill this in as I go. 20 volts right there. Okay, let's do this one. Same thing, so we have two amps going through the 20 ohms. So again, I'm just going to use Ohm's law again, V equals I times R. So V equals 2 times 20. So my voltage across this resistor is 40. And we'll shoot for the last one too. So we're going to, current goes through here. We're going to find the voltage across this. So V equals 2 times 30 gives us a V of 60 volts. So there's going to be 60 volts across this resistor here. Now there is a little miniature check, a little mini check you can do as you go to make sure you're on the right track. 
notice what happens with these three voltages. If you were to add these up, what would you get? 20 plus 40 plus 60, 120. Now that will always happen in a series circuit. When you add up the voltages, they should add up to the total. Okay, so there's two big concepts. Number one, the current's the same for all resistors. Number two, the voltages will add up to the total. The reason for this, by the way, if you remember, a volt is a joule per coulomb. So a volt is like an energy, it's like an energy concept. So conservation of energy says if I start with 120, if I lose 20 here, that leaves me with 100. If I lose 40 here, that leaves me with 60, and therefore 60 goes through there. So that will always happen, they'll always add up to the total. All right, any questions on the series? Let's look at the, let's do the powers. So once you know V and I, power is easy, right? Just multiply. 40, 80, 120. Which one of these light bulbs is the brightest? The 30, the 120, that's 120. If I said you have a 40 watt light bulb, 80 watt light bulb, 120 watt light bulb, which one is brightest? 120, yeah. So this one's actually the brightest here. Now that should be weird if you're paying attention to the warm up. Okay, good. So weird things happen when you hook stuff up in series. So normally, if these were just all by themselves, which of these would be the brightest light bulb? The 10, the 10 ohm would have been the brightest, okay? However, when you hook them up in series, the 10 is no longer the brightest. All of a sudden, the 30 would become the brightest one, and 20, and then 10. Notice these numbers, they're actually kind of low, and we're gonna do it, when we do the next problem, you'll see how low they actually are compared to what you should expect. Okay, any final things on series? We are gonna spend about two, three days on this, so if you don't totally understand, you will in the next couple days.